these gentlemen are great writers, they're very successful, they came late. And I want them to at least be, to be exposed to the talent and who they are. Uh, they write helpful. Jane joined a television feature, Jane, and then uh, Shane is directed, has been writing for a long time, so we'll discuss uh, shows, what they do, things like that. Um, I think the thing first the other writers want to know, may not necessarily be for them, exactly how you create what you're writing at. So Shane, what do you do when you're thinking of writing, is there an offer on the table, you have ideas waiting to happen, and what's the first thing you do? Uh, <coughs> My case is a little different, maybe a little bit um, unusual because it never occurred to me starting out to try to sell work to take it to someone, fit it to somebody and get a sale. I, I started writing a spec script, which is you, you're nuts enough that in a sort of dark, empty room with no one around, you just sit down at a typewriter at the time and you just Thank work you. along with the faith, the leap of faith, that someone's going to want to buy it once you're finished. Now the good news is, if you write a piece by yourself, a spec script, you can sell it for whatever you want because you own that piece of material. It's yours. If no one wants it, you wasted your time. Or, or whatever. The point is, if you go and commission a script, if you go to a studio or a production company and they pay you to write, you get paid, you get to eat, you get to go to your family and say, I'm a working writer, but then they own the material. So it's kind of a risk. If you want to write a spec, if you want to write your own material and own it, the rewards, when it comes time to sell it, are so much greater if, in fact, someone wants to buy it. But at the same time, most writers need to eat. Most writers need to make it a living. They have families, and they're the ones who get jobs, they're the ones who get hit by the writer's strike, these workaday guys who just pulled on a salary. Um, so my case is actually unusual. I'm more, I'm more interested in hearing what, how Jim uh, <laughs> got into it. Yeah, Jim, what, what I, I think, you know, I think um, I'm sitting next to a man who's probably one of the most successful writers in the history of features. I mean, he's a brilliant guy and he's been extraordinarily uh, really fortunate, really, quite frankly. I mean, there are very few people like yourself that would create me the weapon and create some of these other shows that he's done, and he did it on his own, and he has, like you said, the independence. The reality is, is that he's one of the few who has the privilege of being independent and not having to... I've been in a lot more situations than I think he has been in where I have been paid by studios to write stuff for them, and my life is, quite frankly, fucking miserable because they will, they will really torment you because it's... It may be their, your own idea, but they want to make it theirs. Where Shane will create something and either they like it, they make it, or they don't. And it, it, I would recommend go that way if you can. If you can, if you have the money, if you have the ability to eat, like you said, put food on your family's table, which you all have to do, which you all have to do, do it that way. Because you do have independence and you have artistic integrity, in which you know we all try to muster. But the reality is, it's a world of compromise, and uh, some of the compromises are pretty ugly. So if you can do it this way, do it change way. When you actually have, have decided to write something, you've been assigned, what do you do for it to write an album? Well, I've, I've, been, I've been different also. I mean, I've been lucky in a, in a different kind of way where I've done stuff. In, um, what do I say this? Um, I've, been in, I've been my own agent in television. You know what I mean? I created my own TV shows and I've managed to get them up. So I haven't been as lucky as Shane in his theatrical work. So, yeah, I mean, I think um, it's one or the other. What's the hardest part of writing for you? Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, you know, I, 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 don't, I, I guess the discipline of it all. Yeah, I, I think people forget you have to physically be in shape to, to write. I think you have to be emotionally willing to delve into certain realities that you may not want to necessarily want to address. And I think you have to physically and mentally be, have stamina to do it because it takes an enormous amount of work. I mean, I think you mentioned it. I mean, we shared office space on the floor. And, you know, I, I would run into Shane at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, and I'm saying, well, what kind of life is it? Why am I in my office at 2 o'clock in the morning? Why is he in the office at 2 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, because if you were listening to music and there were women there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's the only reason. I'll go well, around the next. <laughs> <laughs> they were writers. <laughs> Sometime. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a, a bit of an embarrassment in terms of uh, confession. But at my house, I have a box set, a complete box set of a show called Dexter, uh, nah. with which Jim is intimately associated. 
It is still shrink wrapped. I have not watched it. Shame on you. Not only that, it was given to me as a gift. I didn't pay for it. Oh, good. That's easy done. Uh, but this show, my, my brother, every time I see my brother, he hawks me to see Dexter. He says it's the most unique, unusual, almost um, impossible concept to have made accessible, to take this character and make you, because my brother, he hates the sight of blood. And so Jim takes on challenging projects. Jim doesn't say, I want to do a buddy pick that's easy. Jim takes something and says, no way you can make that into a movie. No uh, way. Okay. Okay. Now, wait a second. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I'll say two things to that. One is, I appreciate the compliment that's coming from Jane, but to dismiss a buddy pick, which is what he just did, uh, like a lethal weapon, is really extraordinary because that's one of the hardest forms in the world to write. I mean, how else? You create characters like he did in *The Weapon* that looks at the first blush as a, you know, just a typical bloody uh, bloody pick, but it's incredibly heartbreaking story. I mean, how do you do that? Do you know what I mean? You get two cops and you know they're going out and killing all the bad guys. It's not an easy thing to do. So I appreciate the compliment, but what he's done is is equally, I think, you know, in a lot of ways far better in a lot of ways. So you know. All right, we're done.